Hello everyone. Thank you for being so patient and for joining us in today's webinar. We are so pleased to have you here. Uh, it's time to begin the proceedings. Uh, I'm Vaishnavi Thakur, a PhD student at the University of Tokyo, and I'll be your host for today's session. So assisting me as a sub-facilitator is Ms. Sakshi Vama. Uh, today's webinar focuses on studying and working in Japan, aiming, aiming to promote education in Japan and inspire students to pursue higher studies here. So this is organized by the University of Tokyo India office, where we have invited experts from various universities across Japan to provide their valuable information and guidance on the programs offered. So Japan boasts the third world's largest economy and uh, the highest unemployment rate among developed G7 nations, making it a great destination for the skilled professionals. So, but unfortunately due to lack of awareness, many students opt for Western countries for their higher education. And our goal is to bridge that gap, uh, dispel misconceptions about Japan, such as language requirements, tuition fees, and various other questions you have. And if you have any queries, please post them in the Q&A portal. And the panelists from uh, the University of Tokyo India office and the university representatives will be there to assist you. So now let's dive into the webinar. Uh, before that, let me share the agenda slide with you. Uh, so we have, uh, we'll start with the University of Tokyo in your office. We'll have a presentation from Ms. Sakshi Roy, who's an assistant manager at the University of Tokyo in your office to introduce us about the office and various uh, activities it does. Later on, we'll move into the university presentations. So with this, I would like to hand over the session to Ms. Sakshi. Thank you, Vaishnavi San. I'll just share my screen. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you so much. So namaste everyone. Welcome to this webinar study and our career in Japan session 15. My name is Sakshi Roy and it's my pleasure to thank all our expert panel members from prestigious Japanese universities who attended and contributed to this webinar series. So thank you uh, everyone for your time to attend this webinar and for your continuous support. Thank you so much. So just in brief, um, our office is a part of Study in Japan Global Network Project in Southwest Asia by MEX, and we usually provide information on Japanese universities. So in order to increase awareness of higher education opportunities in Japan, we organize education fairs and seminars throughout India. So these are all the basic parts of our um, office activities. Um, all right. So as you all know, our webinars are brought to you by MEX, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology in Japan. The main purpose of these webinars is to introduce you to some of the top Japanese universities. And um, in this online session, all the universities will be discussing the English based programs and scholarship opportunities uh, that are available to them. And it's also a huge opportunity for all of you to uh, know their programs and offerings directly by each university representatives. So I would like to ask all of you to please listen carefully and please feel free to ask your questions uh, to our university representatives in the Q&A box. So uh, in this slide, this is just a brief idea about number of higher education institutes in Japan. In Japan, there has been total approximately uh, 700 plus universities as well as specialized vocational institutions. And moreover, Japan is consistently ranked among the top 10 countries for education. And some of the Japanese universities um, have been ranked among top 500 universities in the world. So therefore, you learn from the uh, some of the finest minds in the world and work in some of the most modern labs if you wish to consider your um, higher studies in Japan. So uh, this is the email address of our office in case if you have any questions later after attending this webinar, please do not hesitate to contact us. We'll be very happy to help you, uh, you with your queries and uh, we'll also share this email in the chat box for your reference. So thank you so much. And further, uh, we are also available on social media platforms. So please stay engaged by following our Facebook page, Instagram page, and make sure to subscribe our YouTube channel. Um, our social media platform offers the latest updates on study in Japan webinars alongside the relevant information. And if um, you would like to see the past webinar recordings, you can find them readily available on our YouTube channel. So just check the recordings of our previous webinars and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And it would be very grateful if you can like and support uh, our YouTube videos. 
So that's all from my side today. I request all of you to please stay tuned with us till the end of the session. And I hope this webinar will be fruitful, um, will be valuable and fruitful to every one of you. So thank you so much for paying attention. Uh, we hope you enjoy the session. Thank you, Sankshi San, for your uh, valuable advice. So I'm sure students uh, have a lot of questions and they do not know whom to approach. So like Sankshi San has mentioned, you are free to uh, email message on either the social media platforms or on the email IDs which she has provided. So you will get the support or any questions or queries which you have regarding the admission process. So the University of Tokyo India office is here to assist you. Uh, with that, uh, let me share the agenda slide uh, again and let's move to the university presentations. Just a moment, please. Uh, so next we have uh, the University of Tokyo, uh, the, Un the University of Tokyo. So to introduce the University of Tokyo, we have Ms. Yuki Ueno from the Graduate School of Public Policy and where she introduces us about the uh, programs which are being offered in the Graduate School. To give a brief introduction about the University of Tokyo, uh, we all know that University of Tokyo is one of the very highly elite institutes in Japan and they have uh, there was there's uh, many Nobel laureates as well who have been produced from the university and uh, there are uh, like around 17 Nobel Prize laureates, five astronauts and various medalists. So it is considered a world-class platform for research, education and is also contributing to human knowledge in partnership with other leading global universities. So like I mentioned before, we have Ms. Yuki Ueno, a student at the Graduate School of Public Policy to introduce the program to us. You can start your presentation. Yes, thank you for into thank you for your introduction. So let me share my screen. Thank you. Okay, so firstly, I'd like to appreciate this opportunity. I'm really glad to be here with you guys, and I'm going to introduce Glass at the uh, at the University of Tokyo today. Oh, firstly, the University of Tokyo was established in 1877 as the first national university in Japan. And since then, it has been a leading research university in Japan. And it has 10 faculties and 15 graduate schools and enrolls about 30,000 students and about 4,200 of whom are international students. And the University of Tokyo is concerned to be the most selective and prestigious university in Japan, and it is counted as one of the best universities in the world. Uh, actually, we have two, campus two campuses in Tokyo, and both campuses are located in the center of Tokyo. So besides studying, you can find many things to do around the campus. And one of our campus, uh, there is Sibia, one there is Sibia near the near one of our campuses and it is a culture, cultural hub in Japan so you can enjoy cafes, restaurants and shopping there and you also have Akihabara this is oh sorry this is famous for inexpensive electronic shops and made cafes and stores for anime and game lovers and you also have Ueno this uh, there are many places to drink, so it's really awesome to drink beer after the, after the uh, at the end of the day, after university. So today I'm going to introduce about the Master of Public Policy International Program at the Graduate School of Public Policy. It is called GLASP. It offers a two-year interdisciplinary graduate level professional degree for future public policy professionals. Its curriculum is centered on case studies. You can get opportunities to collaborate with po policy practitioners and receive feedbacks based on their experiences. Faculty with practic practical experience teach courses closely related to policy practice. And seminars are held with people at the center of policy making and those in, those in charge of corporate management. And in this course, all of presentations and publication of policy papers are emphasized in order to improve your communication skills. So you are encouraged to submit research papers and thesis. And here are some numbers about GLASP. As you can see, there are 230 faculty members and 
and also 50% 50 of, inter of GLASP students are international students. And they come from 67 countries or regions. So as you can see, you can enjoy diversity here. And also you can focus on your study in a very nice environment. This is facilities for GLASP. And yeah, and there, there besides there are two ways to participate in international activities as a GLASP student. In both programs, you can engage in study at 40 partner universities. And especially under the double degree program, uh, you can obtain degrees from the University of Tokyo and the partner university upon if you satisfy the graduation requirements of both degrees. And of course, our partners are top of university around the world, like Shianspo or King's College in London or Beijing University. So maybe you are interested in career after graduation. So taking about 55 students who graduated in September last year, most of them started working after graduation and some decided to take further study. Let's take a closer look at employment opportunities. Most of them get a job at a public institution in Japan or abroad. For example, Ministry of Economy in Japan, Ministry of Finance in India, and Enterprise Singapore. And at the same time, financial services are also popular for GLASP students. There are some years, there are some years, the largest number of people engaged in financial service, services abroad. For example, the Central Bank of Indonesia, Central Bank of Philippines. Taking about those who get who got a job in Japan, they started working at they started they started working at Goldman Sachs or SMBC. And also international consulting companies are popular popular choice for them, such as PwC, EY, and McKinsey. And this is also very important information. The major scholarships are shown in the table. So please check the check our website for more opportunities. And this is information about admission. You are eligible to apply if you are complete if you completed or expect com complete your undergraduate education by the enrollment date. And yeah, this is uh, there. Are all, yeah, this this is also there. There there is information about application materials, but actually, there are more detailed application requirements at our website. So if you are interested in GLASS, please check this, please visit our website through this QR code. And after this presentation, I'm going to send a website URL to into chat box. Thank you. Thank you, Yuki-san, for your wonderful presentation. I'm sure students have found it very insightful because we have so many students and like asking questions usually like about uh, where can they find programs related to public policy or law or economics. And also you have described the career tracks after graduation, so it was quite useful. And let's look at the Q&A portal. So most of the questions have already been answered. Uh, so, yes, uh, like you have mentioned, uh, uh, like there are graduate programs in the Graduate School of Public Policy, right? But are there any short-term programs where students can come, come for internships or like a short-term exchange program? Yes, I, yeah, I think so. There are many programs for international students, yes. I see, okay. Uh, so if there are students currently studying in India, they can uh, come to Graduate School of Public Policy on a short-term exchange program. Oh, can I repeat the question? Uh, so if there are students currently studying in India, they can come uh, for a short-term exchange program, right? Yes, I'm not sure, but I yeah, I think there is opportunities. There is such there there are such opportunities. I think. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And so, like asking more about your personal experience from the university because you are currently studying here. So, what uh, what aspect of your program you like the most? Um. Yes. Um. I think the best. Yeah. 
best things about the University of Tokyo is it is the best university in Japan, so you can enjoy many opportunities. Mm -hmm. So and yeah, there are many students who are who there are many students and they are studying various things. So mm -hmm. yeah, people you met here are very wonderful. So yeah, I think you can enjoy meeting people here. Okay, that's nice. Uh, so what are the main uh, entrance exams? So are, the, are there any entrance exam or what is the admission criteria? Do you have any idea about it? Oh, for international student, you, you yes, need that's to, right. yeah, for international student, you need to make, you need to submit essay and some test to scores like SAT or yeah, maybe it, it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be SAT, but you need to submit scores. Okay. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. And about Japanese language requirements, so usually there is very common misconception that all the programs or like all the most of the courses are in Japanese. So what do you think about your program? So uh, are they available in English? Oh, actually, GLASP, you, you can you can take master program at GLASP all in English. Oh, nice. There are many international students and most of them cannot speak Japanese. So you don't you don't have to worry about it. I see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Yuki, for, for your wonderful presentation, for clearing of the doubts. And I think there are a few more questions. So, like, do we have application fee or admission fee? Oh, okay. Oh, so, maybe for, for accurate information, you should check our website. Yes, yes, that's right. So, uh, Yuki-san is here to share about her experience of studying in the university. So, uh, to know more details about the program or what kind of courses are available, I highly recommend students to check the University of Tokyo website because all the details are clearly mentioned on the website. It's not just about University of Tokyo because all the details of the university, the admission process are available on the website. So, any question you have, you can directly ask the admissions team or contact the university. Thank you once again, Miss Yuki, for your presentation. So, let's move on to university presentations now so in university presentations we have uh, next the nucb undergraduate school so nucb undergraduate school is uh, is is nagoya university of commerce and business so it's also called as nucb undergraduate school which is a japanese private university and for more than 80 years nucb has led the way as a premier educational institute and uh, recently, they have also been recognized by Times Higher Education for providing a very di diverse and uh, supportive and inclusive university environment. And so for, from the university, we have today Mr. Freddie Mason, the Assistant Director of Admissions. So we have the man in, himself who is here to introduce the university and also address any queries you have regarding the admission process. So please feel free to ask any questions you have. And uh, I would like to request Mr. Freddie Mason to deliver his presentation now. Thank you so much for the uh, wonderful introduction. I think my presentation is now done, um, but I will present. Um, it's always been a pleasure to, to join these uh, sessions. We've had so many uh, inquiries and students enroll um, from these events. So uh, very much a thank you from NUCB's side. Um, so I work for NUCB undergraduate school. So we are talking about the bachelor options but of course we do have the graduate school um, my presentation won't cover that today but if you do have questions I can uh, help uh, towards the end of the presentation if you are interested in an MSc or an MBA in English um, but today I will be focusing on the bachelor side um, of things so um, as was was mentioned in the wonderful introduction um, we are celebrating an official 70 uh, anniversary of, of NUCB. The history goes back much longer uh, than that before we was um, a university. Um, you can see uh, the founder's uh, statue here, uh, who was the very first international student uh, to graduate from the University of Alberta in Canada. And I think from his time there, uh, we have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of his uh, memos and mottos as an international student heading off to Canada uh, without a smartphone, getting on a ship, being a first international student who, you know, obviously didn't speak fluent English at that point. So 
uh, we're very proud of, of the fact that he went there and, and what he went through um, as an international student. And I think that leads the way to, to what we want students to achieve here at NUCB uh, through what we call the frontier spirit. So um, nurturing students who think creatively and independently. Um, to date, it is a family run organization. So uh, we have our own high school. Uh, we have two campuses uh, at the undergraduate level. And then, as I mentioned, we do have the graduate school if you are interested. Um, I guess that most students are interested uh, in English based options. So you can see at the bachelor level, uh, we are focusing on the global BBA, so the Bachelor of Business Administration, um, and then at the master's level, NMSC, um, or for those that have some work experience, you can enroll into the MBA. Now, one of the reasons to perhaps consider NUCB as a business school um, is in fact our accreditations. Uh, there are just over 100 schools in the world uh, they've achieved what we call the triple accreditation or the triple crown. Uh, we are the only school in Japan as well that have achieved that feat. So um, we don't have so long today. I, I could do a whole presentation on accreditations, but essentially we are, be, we are being externally assessed every three to four years by these external bodies that set very, very strict standards of education, uh, which is why there's only just you know, over 100 schools that have them. And they're looking at specific pillars, whether it's our mission, our education, our curriculum, our partner schools, to mean that we are one of the top business schools um, in the world. Um, you can also see through the graduate school doing very well in their QS uh, rankings uh, and also the only school ranked in Japan by the Financial Times. So the accreditors are, are really looking at the quality of the faculty. Um, over 70% of, of NUCB's faculty um, hold PhD or doctorate status. Um, you can also see some of the uh, schools that they have graduated from here. Uh, and more importantly, as a business school, over 50% of our faculty are what we classify as practitioners. So we do like to hire faculty that have you know, experience to add value to the classroom. Um, I always talk about our marketing professor as an example. Um, from South Korea uh, for more than 20 years. He was head of their marketing department. So um, it's great to learn from someone like him. And uh, it's one of the most popular classes here um, at NUCB. Um, Location-wise, uh, we're in the third largest city in Japan. I know many of you may have heard of Tokyo and Kyoto. Uh, we're in just on the borders of Nagoya. Okay, so it's, it's a beautiful place to live. Um, it's not so crowded, beautiful nature surrounding uh, us. Uh, transportation in Japan is obviously fantastic. Uh, and you can see the campus here, which is you know pretty unique to Japan, where it's all in one. So uh, the statistic we have, it's 1.5 times Tokyo Disneyland. Everything is here on this one site from uh, restaurants and cafes and 7-Eleven. We have library here, you know, facilities for club life. Some of the dormitories are located close by as well. So it is a little bit suburban, but it does add a lot of value to having that campus life. Um, and I think students that aren't looking for really a busy, busy city, um, they actually really enjoy their student life here um, at NUCB. Uh, we invest a lot in the facilities on campus. We are very modern. You can see some of the facilities here. Uh, most importantly, that classroom in the top middle that I'll, I'll talk about a little bit later. And here you can see some of uh, school buildings, uh, as well as the school bus that, you know, get students around town and, and back to the dormitories. I did mention the clubs. I think it's really important that students take part in these. It's not just sports. Uh, you can obviously see uh, baseball and tennis, uh, actually American football and, and basketball. Uh, but we do have music clubs, dance clubs, cultural clubs, volunteering clubs. So um, we hope that students take advantage of, of all of the options uh, available to them. Um, as mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, we, we are very proud of, of the fact of our diversity. Uh, we have more than 300 international students, is about 20% of our bachelor population, um, and a, about 58 nationalities at last time uh, of recording. So uh, you can see a wonderful picture there. And obviously the wonderful work that the University of Tokyo are doing in, in Southwest Asia. I wanted to highlight the students on the Global BBA program from those countries. Uh, you can see a lot of students from, from India, BBA uh, in Japan. Obviously in English is, is a highlight for them. 
but we do have students from Nepal and Pakistan. And if you do want to speak to them, you can head to the NUCB website and read their stories and, and perhaps their reasons for, for choosing us. Um, and perhaps, you know, we'll run uh, webinars in the future with them as well. Faculty also well represented. We have more than 12 nationalities uh, just teaching on the Global BBA program uh, from Australia, US, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Singapore. Uh, so again, we, we're really proud of, of that diversity there. So I, I really want to focus on the curriculum uh, and the way of teaching, because I think these are the kind of things that make NUCB a little bit unique. So uh, bachelor degrees in Japan are four years. And I already mentioned it, it's entirely in English, so no Japanese is required. You can see the layout and the options within the four years here, whether you're looking to do you know, internships or exchange programs, double degree programs, that is very flexible to you. Um, I think uh, U of Tokyo was also talking about the case study method. Um, it's something that we adopt here at NUCB, 100% of our classes uh, use the cases. You can see in that picture just how interactive it is. We're smallish in class size, average class size of 40 students because we want uh, students to participate, do the group work and do the projects. So it's practical learning where you can, you know, read about these companies, come to the class, learn from different perspectives, build on your, you know, your critical thinking, your creative thinking, your leadership skills, working in diverse groups. I think these are all of the skills that we want to impart on you throughout your four years as an NUCB student. It looks something simple as this, that, you know, there's a lot of time for self-study or, or preparation. So we don't have lectures as such. We give you the case study. Students will prepare that. We may build your confidence in a smaller group, come into that larger group setting that I previously shared, uh, and then have a lot of time for self-reflection. How do you see yourself in a similar situation? What would if you have done? What decisions do you think you could make? Um, and then work on, as I said, your your delivery of 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 your you know your planning uh, as a business leader. So actually, most of the classes will have a very high weighting towards uh, preparation, class participation. Uh, sometimes that's as much as sixty percent. So we don't follow lecture exam system. It's much more that you come prepared and you get the grades based on you know the work and effort that you put in throughout all of the courses. There may be simulations, but never really 100% exam-based uh, lectures. You can really see how interactive it is. You can see the closeness to faculty. Uh, you can see things like business plan competitions uh, taking place on campus as well. And a lot of the spaces on campus are really designed for that, that group work uh, dynamic. Now, the schedule also makes NUCB really different in that most students have one class per day, uh, Monday to Friday. One class is 200 minutes in length. So it's really short, really compact. Obviously, outside of the classes, students have to do their individual uh, research. But it does, does give time for uh, activities such as club life, part-time work, language learning. We do build Japanese in for those that would like to learn it but it's not mandatory past the introductory level. One class will last for seven weeks. That's our term system. And then you can also see that we have a pretty unique break system. January to April is our winter spring break. So every year students have three, three and a half months uh, to take. You can see the curriculum here. We do recommend checking it out on the website. You can delve into uh, each subject and learn about what you would learn the cases that we would use. It is a fixed curriculum, so meaning that all of these courses are mandatory. Uh, you can see in the third year, uh, you would start what we call a case writing seminar. So rather than uh, following a thesis, uh, we give you two years to help you create your own uh, case study um, as, as well. So the curriculum is really comprehensive. It does cover most of the major topics within business administration. You can see management and econ, finance, um, but we also start in the first year with introductory level. So if you haven't followed the you know, business route in high school, um, we don't set no restrictions on that for the students. We love to uh, talk about Japanese culture. Um, we, we have a lot of activities for the students outside of campus for this. 
Um, so you can go uh, to stay overnight in a World Heritage site. You can do calligraphy. Uh, you can do flower arrangement, go to the sumo. Uh, that's really fun for, for the students to take part in as well. Now, if you are thinking of maybe multiple countries or you've not made your mind up yet, um, one of the accreditations really look at the quality of our exchange partners. Uh, so study abroad, we, we have more than 150 schools, uh, almost 60 countries. So there's there's somewhere if you're interested, I'm sure you can spend up to one year per school. You only pay tuition to NUCB. Um, so, you know, comparing Japanese tuition to US, Australia, Canada, uh, it's pretty huge cost saving there. So you can also uh, learn different business practices if you wanted to go uh, to another university. But again, it is optional. You can do the double degree. So if you are quite ambitious uh, within four years, you can get two diplomas, uh, either in Ireland, France or Taiwan. One of the fantastic things about Japan in general is, is universities have these really, really high um, employment success rates, you know, NUCB over 98%. Uh, you can see a variety of industries that our students uh, go to. And just as a quick highlight for, for some of our recent graduates on the Global BBA program, wherever they're working within the Toyota group, uh, you know, going off and doing their masters in Europe, working in the government back in Singapore, one of the largest tech companies in India, starting their own company. You know, there's a lot of different paths that students can choose uh, with a business uh, administration degree. So here is the tuition. You can see the total there for the four years in Japanese yen, US dollars and euro. Um, so for the total four years, just over 30,000 USD uh, before any uh, scholarship is given. Living in this part of Japan uh, is very reasonable. This is an estimate of a budget around seven to eight thousand US dollars uh, per year as well. One of the guaranteed scholarships that NUCB has is for our dormitories. They're all private, no sharing, uh, separated by gender, and they are furnished. We guarantee uh, a monthly discount on the rent, depending on which uh, dormitory that you have. These are all NUCB dorms. So for this one, it's 10,000 yen per month. So that's 120,000 Japanese yen per year. Uh, and you can keep that for all four years, just keeping attendance and GPA. Uh, this is the female version, same uh, tuition, uh, sorry, same uh, scholarship there. And this one is a little bit closer to downtown. So actually the guaranteed scholarship is much higher. Uh, so 420,000 Japanese yen per year. We don't have so much time today. So application, I recommend that you just arrange an individual call with us to go through it. But it is rather straightforward. Um, download the application guide, uh, read through that. Uh, all of the deadlines are rolling. So once per month, there's an opportunity to apply. We have no restrictions on nationalities. There are a lot of ways to uh, show to us your English proficiency, as long as in your, your last uh, year of high school, you are eligible to apply. Um, that's both for India and Nepal. So it doesn't matter about your curriculum, whether it's the CBSE, whether it's the IB diploma, the A-levels, um, you are eligible to apply. If you are confused, just reach out and we'll get back to you. Uh, submission is entirely online. You do have to complete uh, three essays. Uh, get a template from NUCB for your letter of recommendation um, and then have an online interview with faculty that's around 15 to 20 minutes long. So enrollment is twice per year, the spring and the fall. Sadly, if you are overseas, the spring has now finished. But if you are looking at the fall of 2024, um, our applications will run from January up until May. Um, and then, as I said, each month there's a window for you to apply. Those last stages are only for Japanese nationals or domestic applicants. So I mentioned one of the guaranteed uh, scholarships is the dormitory. Uh, the second guaranteed scholarship is a brand new MacBook Air. So you've got a computer to start your studies. There are tuition reduction scholarships, IB diploma scholarships, post entrance scholarships from the government and from NUCB as well. If you do want to do the study abroad, uh, no additional tuition. We also have scholarships for the flights as well. 
And uh, yeah, here's our contact details. Uh, please take a note of that. And if you are on Instagram, you've got a pretty nice Instagram page as well. So thank you very much for, for listening. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, for the next few minutes. Thank you so much for the very delightful and comprehensive presentation. So there are, besides engineering background in India, there are so many students who take commerce background. So I'm sure this is one of the very good paths for them to pursue higher studies. Uh, thank you, Mr. Freddy. Let's look into the Q&A portal. Uh, so some of the questions are, uh, so regarding the MEX scholarship, so there are, uh, there is embassy recommended scholarship and university recommended scholarship, right? So how many students are usually given MEX scholarship from the university? So from NUCB, we don't have the MEX scholarship from the university side, um, yes. but we do have students that have obtained uh, the embassy recommendation enrolled um, to NUCB. I see. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. So there's another question about uh, when will the scholarships be open? So is there any timeline for the scholarships in the university? Like so the two guaranteed ones uh, will be given um, confirmed with the, uh, the offer letter. So the computer and the dormitory scholarship. Um, anything else outside of that tuition reduction IB scholarship, it's also notified in the offer letter. And then post entrance, uh, like the JASO Honours Scholarship, um, that's one that's quite common. Um, and then obviously as a student with your GPA in attendance um, or from a local government organisation, uh, we've currently got two students getting a pretty prestigious scholarship. It's 100,000 yen per month uh, for two years. And we get that every year for a few students. So and that's only for students within Asia. Okay, thank you, Mr. Freddy. I think uh, having getting scholarships from the university here is one of the uh, plus points of studying here. There are so many plenty of scholarships students can take advantage of. Uh, and and the question for the NUCB University is whom to contact for business school. So is it you or is there another admissions team? So yes, yeah, so if you are interested in the masters, the MSc or the MBA, they have their own uh, office administration staff. Um, you can contact them. So I'll, I'll put the uh, email address um, in the in the chat for you. Uh, they're also very responsive. They've also got uh, many, many scholarships. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you take the GMAT, based on your GMAT score, you can get up to 80 percent reduction. Um, they also have a diversity scholarship. So if you're from a country that they don't have so many students from, there's also the dormitory scholarship, um, also from JICA. Um, so again, yeah, please reach out to them. Yes, thank you, Mr. Freddy. So one last question I would like to ask is about the admission. Since you are from the admissions team, when you get applications from the universities, what is something which you look for and what should students uh, like highlight in their profile while applying? It's an excellent question. Uh, we've got interviews next week, so uh, <laughs> it's fresh. Um, I, I think, you know, NUCB, we asked for three essay questions. And that's, first of all, the really simple one. So we can really see how much effort someone has put into an essay. Um, you know, our application window is almost one year long. So it really shows to us that there's no need to rush. So if there is you know, some, some laziness in the essay that they haven't filled the page, they haven't answered all three questions, um, it's quite common that they won't even be invited to interview at that point. So one is the, obviously, um, uh, essay, I think, Letter recommendation, really just follow the template. Um, we don't have any restrictions on you know, background of high school in subjects covered. We really do a holistic overview. We're looking at two to three years with your predicted grades. Um, and obviously there's a little bit of a higher weighting towards the interview process because of the case method. So, you know, we give everyone that chance. If you get to interview, impress the faculty, um, with you know your reasonings for choosing the school there's a lot of business schools some fantastic schools in india so you must have you know reason a for choosing japan b and you see b and then and i say c is is the way that we teach you know do you find yourself a good fit um for that so I, i'd say all of that is the holistic part of, of application yeah yes thank you very much for giving us the insider information and uh, it was very delightful to have you here. And once again, thank you for joining us with the presentation. Uh, Thanks,
Uh, yes. Let me share the agenda slide. Uh, so in the agenda slide, we have next Tohoku University. So Tohoku University is founded in 1907 and it is one of the third imperial, it's the third imperial university in Japan. And it is ranked among the top universities in the world, uh, which, is, which has been consistently placed in top 100 global rankings. So there are, uh, it offers wide range of undergraduate and graduate programs, and it has many Nobel Prize laureates as well. Uh, it has been a pioneer in scientific fields like high temperature, superconductivity, and uh, IPS cell research, especially in the uh, engineering background. So to give us more details about the university, I would like to invite Professor Dimitro and Professor Yumiko Watanabe from the university. Uh, thank you for your kind introduction. Let me share the screen. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure to be here and introduce you to the study opportunities at Tohoku University. So above all, I would like to mention our beautiful city, Sendai. The history of the city began in 1600 and all over the centuries, Sendai has been political and economic center of Tohoku region. This is Tohoku region, Northeast region of Japan. As you can see, Sendai is located not far from Tokyo, just about 300 kilometers, and it takes an hour and a half by train. Sendai is also known as a city of trees and as an academic city due to a great number of universities relative to population. And referring to Albert Einstein, we can say that Sendai is one of the most suitable city for academic research. So, Tohoku University was established in 1907 as Japan's third imperial university. Today, the university encompasses 10 faculties, 15 graduate schools, and has about 18,000 students. It should be noted that uh, faculty-students ratios of 1 to 6 is the minimum among research universities in Japan. Since its foundation, the university policies of research first, open door, practice oriented research have produced excellent graduates, generated significant research outcomes, and contributed to society. In addition, Tohoku University has been recently named as the first recipient of the state subsidy program, University for International Research Excellence. As you can see in this slide, Tohoku University takes high places in national and world ranking list, both in research and education. More specifically, Tohoku University takes the first place in Japan for four consecutive, consecutive years since 2020, according to the Times High Education Ranking. Um, Tohoku University also rank highly in uh, QS world ranking in such areas as material science, physics, mechanical, and aeronautical engineering. Strong emphasis on quality of research has always been our tradition. The university is proud of of its five uh, Nobel Prize laureates, among them Dr. Tanaka, who is a graduate of the School of Engineering and got the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2002 for developing a new method for molecular analysis. Nowadays, we are using widely optical fibers as a channel for communication that was proposed by the former president of Tohoku University, Professor Nishizawa. Perhaps all of us use flash memory invented by Professor Masuoka. School of Engineering has a lot of outstanding achievements in the field of material science. For example, Yagi antenna was widely used in radar systems and as a home television antennas. 
The new kind of steel invented by Dr. Honda was a breakthrough in the field of permanent magnetic steel at the time. And the method of perpendicular magnetic recording suggested by Professor Iwasaki achieved great success for hard disk drives in 2005. Uh, Tohoku University is open to diverse talents from all over the world. Our university's international hub, where talented students can gather, learn, and create. Currently, over 2,000 international students are enrolled in study at Tohoku University, including 32 students from India. You can start exploring study opportunities at Tohoku University following this link. Uh, let me present you the study opportunities in more detail. So our university has a variety of opportunities for international students, such as non-degree exchange programs open to undergraduate students from partner universities, JIP, IPLA, so both programs are offered in English. For the graduate students, we have co-labs program that embrace natural science, engineering, medicine, pharmacy, and dentistry. The duration of mentioned programs is up to one year. Then short summer programs in the Japanese language as, as well as in science and engineering targeting undergraduate stu students from our partner universities. And a set of uh, degree programs, including international joint and double degree programs. International degree programs, uh, specifically joint programs, include spintronics, material science, earth science, mechanical system, and so on. You can get more information on this web page. Then uh, let's talk specifically about undergraduate courses. Our university offers three bachelor courses taught entirely in English. So Japanese language proficiency, proficiency is not required. So uh, there are uh, courses like Advanced Molecular Chemistry, International Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, and finally, Applied Marine Biology. So uh, let me present a short video about undergraduate courses available at Tohoku University.
Thank you for watching. <clears throat> uh, let's take, uh, let me continue. Let's take a look at uh, the FGL undergraduate curriculum. Just a second. Apart from liberal arts and basic science courses, our students study a set of top-notch specific courses, and they are deeply involved in lab-based research from the second year. Again, I would like to emphasize that Japanese language proficiency is not required when applying uh, to the programs taught in English. Our students then uh, studied Japanese for uh, one and a half year. So, uh, and FGL, FGL has a career support system which helps international students develop their career. So let me outline also some important information about application process. So you can find the detailed information about step-by-step -step application guide on this web page. You just scan this QR code. And I would like to draw your attention to some important dates. So the application submission period is starts from January 9th. And the deadline for submission is January 17, 2024. So it's about a week. So and an online online entrance exam will be scheduled for one day in March 2024. So Tohoku University has specific academic requirements for each international course such as official English test score, standardized examination score. You can get more information about specific requirements on this web page. So our university offers 23 master's and doctoral courses taught entirely in English in liberal arts, life science, medicine, pharmaceutical science, data science, and so on. Again, you can get more detailed information about available courses on this web page. For example, School of Engineering offers two graduate programs, IMAG-G and RICTA, which is focused mainly on robotics. So I would also like to outline some important steps on how to apply to graduate courses. So first, you need to get consent of acceptance from a prospective supervisor. To find the faculty members in the field of your interest, you could search by keywords. For example, research fields using the below web page. Or alternatively, you could use uh, the name of department or school. To do so, please use the link below. Then please check application requirements on this web page. The next step is submission of application documents. And of course, you need to take an examination. Let me outline that, uh, let me emphasize that Max Scholarship is applied through the pro procedure of application to a program. 
Uh, so, um, if you are interested in studying engineering in Japan, we have a strong, really strong school of engineering, one of the largest schools in Japan. So, let me introduce you to the, to the International Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering course. In this slide, you can see IMAC, uh, contact information, and several useful links where you can get more detailed information about the admission procedure, available scholarships, and curriculum. The Division of Mechanical Engineering consists of more than 100 labs covering a wide range of engineering fields, such as mechanical system, fine mechanics, aerospace engineering, robotics, and biomedical engineering. You can get more detailed information on iMac labs by following this QR code. You can then watch introductory videos for each lab. All videos are in Japanese by default, but you can enable and display English subtitles as well. So let me introduce briefly tuition and cost, our educational expenses, which are pretty affordable. So the education expenses consist of admission and tuition fees. So as you can see in this slide, and average living cost in Sendai is about a thousand US dollar dollars monthly. And uh, I would like to draw your attention to this column. As you can see, um, the tuition fee at our university is much cheaper than, for example, if you compare with the United States public universities. Let me outline the financial support available at the Hoku University. Again, you can get more detailed information on our official website, just scan this QR code. I would like to point out that excellent students are highly likely to receive the Japanese government scholarship next. So uh, let me talk about available scholarship in detail. A variety of scholarship opportunities are offered to international students, which include a monthly stipend and reduction of different fees. International students can receive the max scholarship, which covers both educational and living expenses. All international students are eligible to receive the President's Special Scholarship that can cover all education expenses. Honor scholarship also available, such as JASA scholarship, which partially covers students' living expenses, but only for the first six months. So, um, career opportunities after graduation. Our university high-level research activities have a strong connection to industry. Normally, the number of job offers from industry is over several times of the number of our job-seeking students. Our graduates are employed in leading Japanese companies such as Toyota, Nissan, Hitachi, and over 70% of the bachelor graduates continue to study for graduate courses. It should be also noted that a large proportion of doctoral graduates then work as postdoctoral researchers in the in universities worldwide. Uh, thank you for your attention, and we're looking forward to seeing you at Tohoku University. Thank you, Professor, for a very in, uh, informative presentation. And you have shared a lot of details about scholarships and the timeline as well, which is quite useful to the students. Thank you once again for uh, giving your presentation. And I think Professor Vatanabe was also. No. And yeah. I think Professor Vatanabe was also answering most of the questions in the QA portal. So almost all of them are answered, but they can still take up a few questions. So about the aerospace engineering, there are a few questions about the aerospace engineering in uh, in Tohoku University. So even I have heard that the aerospace engineering in Tohoku University is very strong. So uh, uh, like, what are the requirements to get the admission into it? Yeah, 
Uh, it's, uh, you know, which course you want to apply for, you know, undergraduate or graduate. It's completely different. Uh, yes, I think the student is in the 12th grade, so it is undergraduate course. Undergraduate course, uh, yeah. Basically, we ask to uh, most of the applicants to submit uh, English uh, test score that I held or TOEFL, IBT, and also I we ask to submit uh, uh, international standardized test score such as uh, ACT or uh, EJU or AP or IB mm -hmm. or GCE level. It depends on the uh, uh, high school education course you receive. Okay. So yes, thank you, Professor. So talking about the entrance exam, so is there any cutoff for this course? Like for example, you were saying, mentioning about TOEFL and mm -hmm. IELTS, is there any cutoff mark? Uh, IELTS, I think, which is which, I forgot, you know, why is plus six, another one is six. plus 79. I see, okay. So IELTS is plus six and TOEFL is 79. Yes, thank you. Yeah. And Mm, like, are there any courses in masters and business administration in uh in Tohoku University? Is there any such course in masters in business administration? I think mm -hmm. that uh most probably GPM we call uh GPM that you economics and management courses in English. I see is offered to the international student. All, are, all classes are conducted in English. I see. OK, thank you. So I think the student wants to know if there are any Japanese universities in MBA. So like today, uh, in today's webinar itself, we have like two universities, Tohoku University and, and, and UCB, which has presented earlier. So there's MBA course in both of them. So you can look, look it up. And uh, so what is the last date to submit the application? A student wants to know what is the last day to submit the application. It's an undergraduate course. Uh, they did not mention. Yes, maybe we can go ahead with undergraduate uh, course. Under, undergraduate course, January. Uh, 17. Dimitri, you remember? 17. 17. I see, 17 January. Oh, okay. Yeah, Thank we you. opened the you know, application window about 10 days in January. Oh. I see. So it means that uh, the 10-day period is only to submit the application. So students have to be prepared beforehand itself. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, Particularly the, you know, uh, standardized examination score or English test score, they need, mm. uh, they need to prepare before yes, application. Yes, yes, yes that's right. Yeah, graduate course, first step, you know, to find the, you know, possible supervisor first. Mm. That's very important step. Yes, thank you, Vatnabe-san. Uh, sorry, Sensei, Vatnabe-sensei. And uh, so a student wants to know if there's any priority given to those students who have Japanese language proficiency. Is there any priority given to them? No. Uh, uh, for at least as far as you uh, students want to apply for the English courses, we don't ask any Japanese skill. Okay. So even if a student has a Japanese skill, so is it a plus point for them? Or it is equal it is it is nullified, like it doesn't matter even if they uh, have Japanese we skill. don't evaluate the you know, <laughs> Japanese skill at the application. You I may see. have some, some advantage if you can speak some you know, you know, some Japanese. Certainly it's give you some advantage, but not application. Yes, 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 that's true. So even though all the courses and all the programs are being offered in English, uh, knowing Japanese language is definitely a advantage to the student. Once he comes here, it becomes easier for the everyday life. So exactly. <laughs> and most of the questions are those which can be easily found on the website. So I recommend all the students to go onto the website and. Uh, look for like your desired program and uh, contact the admissions team accordingly. Yeah. So thank you once again, professors, for joining us today and for introducing Tohoku University to us. 
Thank okay, you. thank you very much for thank this you for opportunity. The invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's move on to the next university. So next uh, we have Ritsumeikan University. Ritsumeikan University is also one of the uh, leading universities and private universities in Japan. So it's very well known for its international relations, science and engineering departments. So the university also has exchange programs with some of the prominent schools throughout the world. And another interesting thing I found out about the university is the name itself. So the meaning of Ritsumeikan. So it means that it is a place to establish one's mission in life. So with this, I would like to invite Mr. Danny from the admissions team to provide us more details about the university. Yes, uh, thank you so much for that great introduction. Um, and thank you for all the other uh, universities who have uh, you know, taken the time out to attend today. And of course, for all of you participants listening, um, I hope uh, you're having a good time so far. So again, my name is uh, Danny and I work for the admissions uh, or I'm part of the admissions team at the International Center uh, and I work for its Macon University. Uh, today, I will be speaking with you about mainly about our uh, graduate uh, programs. And so with that, please allow me to screen share. So I'll just go for through a brief, um, yeah, brief uh, talk here. And then I think we can take a look uh, at the homepage directly because, uh, you know, everything as has already been mentioned uh, just, just previously, a lot of your answers can be uh, easily, uh, or your questions can be easily answered by seeing the homepage. So I'd like to go through it with you together and uh, show you how easy it is to navigate uh, to what you, you know, might be interested in. So first of all, for any of you who are, um, you know, uh, maybe a high school student or maybe a Japanese language school student or something, you want to learn about uh, our undergraduate admissions, please email uh, this hello address and I'll send this into the chat later on, uh, but they can handle, uh, the International Admissions Office can handle all of your inquiries about our undergraduate programs, of which we have several uh, that are all offered in uh, English and no, you don't need any uh, Japanese language skills for those programs. So about our graduate uh, programs. So overall, we're to make on, uh, not listed here, but we are, uh, I believe, currently the third largest university in the country by student count. We've got about uh, maybe 38,000 students or so. Um, and uh, so we're a large university. We have over 20 graduate and professional schools. Six of them offer their master's in English and seven offer their doctoral programs in English. Uh, for these programs, no uh, Japanese language skill is required. But as was just uh, mentioned, of course, you know, if you know some Japanese, it's going to make your life in Japan a little bit easier. So, um, uh, yeah, good to study your Japanese, I think, before you come in, but not required for our admissions either. We also have 46 research institutes and centers, which are basically, you know, research hubs. Uh, here in our part of the country, which is uh, in, in Western Japan. Uh, but we have a lot of research hubs doing a lot of uh, industry academia collaboration. Uh, and uh, actually we're uh, often ranked uh, in the top three uh, or basically every year uh, ranked in like the top three for private universities in terms of our uh, 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 grant aid uh, for uh, private universities from, from government and as well uh, as the same for uh, industry academia collaboration. So we've got a lot of uh, great equipment uh, on campus and uh, interesting research being conducted uh, through those uh, uh, funds, basically. We have international students from over 71 countries and regions, over uh, or approximately 1,400 faculty members, uh, and about currently a uh, total 3,300 uh, graduate students, uh, and just over 1,000 of them uh, are, are uh, international students. Overall, we have uh, nearly 3,000 international students at the university total uh, when you count undergraduate and uh, graduate programs. So our university is uh, broken down into three campuses. Our newest campus is Osaka Ibraki campus. It's located about, uh, oh, you know, 12, 13 minutes or so from the uh, Osaka station, the main station uh, in the center of uh, Osaka city. Uh, so it's great location, um, right? It has a station just nearby itself. So easy access uh, to, you know, the campus itself. You can visit Osaka. Uh, also the beautiful city of Kyoto, which I'll mention next, is a quick train ride away. Uh, so there's great opportunities for, you know, um, 
some sightseeing uh, and enjoying city life and uh, and all that while you're studying with us. So at this campus, we have our graduate schools of policy science and technology management. Um, and I'll uh, take a look at maybe policy sciences uh, page uh, in a moment and maybe speak in a little bit more detail about that. But here's just a look at the campus. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, a nice uh, sort of built right into the city campus. There's a nice park uh, built in, um, good relationship with the local community here. And actually, uh, now that COVID is sort of officially over, uh, we've finally been able to have these events again. We just had the, the, the 2023 version of this event uh, this past Sunday. Just another look at the campus. So our uh, other campus, uh, one of our other campuses is located in Kyoto. It's called Kirinasa Campus. And this is where international relations is located. And uh, as was uh, you know mentioned in our introduction there, um, yes, we have, you know, uh, one of the earliest uh, international relations programs in the country uh, is the one that, you know, is at our university. And we're also, um, if not the first, one of the first to uh, put that in English um, and offer uh, bachelor's, master's, and doctor programs in English. Yeah. In Gasa, uh, it's also located, as you can see here, near the Golden Pavilion and many other, you know, beautiful uh tourist attractions here in Kyoto. So you can really enjoy um, the sort of, you know, cultural aspect of Japan uh, while you're here. Just look at the campus. And again, another event there. And then finally, Bikuaku Kusatsu campus in Shiga, which is just uh, next door to Kyoto. And this is where economics, life sciences, information, science and engineering, and science and engineering are located. So, yeah, here's just some peaks at the campus. So to recap, these are our graduate programs. They are all offered in English. And uh, maybe let me switch. Stop my screen share for just one moment and switch over. Before I take a look at the uh, admission fees and tuition and scholarships, let's just take a look at the... Uh, homepage itself. Actually, let's uh, go back here. So, yeah, hopefully you can see that. So this is the Ritsumeikan University homepage. Um, yeah, we have, <laughs> we've got a lot of uh, sports and clubs and circles as a university with, you know, um, about 35,000 or so undergraduate students and like 3,000 graduate students. We have yeah a lot of clubs and circles and you can definitely get into that uh, while you're studying with us. Uh, but if you hover up here at the top, you can go to academics and go to any graduate school of your interest. For example, um, so, sorry. we go to the Graduate School of Science and Engineering, uh, which is we have the largest uh, science and engineering graduate school in Western Japan. And uh, it's our second largest uh, graduate school and college in our university overall. And so the page looks like this. Uh, to get you know uh, in, in, you're going to need to take uh, you know admissions uh, exam, and uh, that's basically uh, done simply online. Uh, you'll fill out some forms and send them through the mail, and then uh, you fill out some online uh, portions as well. And uh, it's quite uh, simple. And that all that information would be listed here. Actually, uh, in the case of Graduate School of Science and Engineering, their program begins from September only. And the admissions is actually uh, opening up from this coming week up through uh, January. So anyone interested, um, you know, definitely check out this page soon. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you want to uh, apply uh, shortly because uh, they only uh, recruit once per year. Um, <clears throat> to go let's see here, one more example, if I may. Uh, Graduate School of International Relations. So yes, International Relations is one of the uh, programs we're definitely known for. And the program itself, you can cover over uh, academics and you can go down to the curriculum. And uh, basically we've got uh, two programs here. Um, I think most of you are you know, English speakers. So you'd probably be interested in the Global International Relations Program, which is English-based. 
This program is broken down into global governance, sustainable development, culture, society, and media, and global Japanese studies clusters. And you can take courses from any cluster, but generally, you know, based on your interest, probably uh, you'd be taking mostly courses in one, for example, culture, society, and media, and then maybe taking some electives in the other courses. And yeah, here's a, a sort of look at uh, what sort of topics are covered in these different clusters. Uh, one thing that's certainly important, if you would like to, you know, uh, secure admissions at any of our graduate schools, um, your regular admissions, you're going to want to find a professor first. So obviously, you know, if we don't have a, a, a faculty member who's, you know, uh, in, in the same uh, field, uh, which you're trying to get into, then, you know, obviously, you know, we can't help you. So I definitely recommend you look that up first. And so in the case of uh, international relations here, you can come to their academic advisors page. It's very neatly organized. For example, you can search by issue, uh, academic field, by region, uh, if they're, you know, a specialist in Africa, Asia, Middle East, Europe, whatever it might be, or you can search by uh, degree and language. Uh, so for example, professors who are uh, eligible to uh, be academic advisors for the master's program, and they'll teach you in English, or maybe the doctoral program in Japanese, and so on and so forth. So let's go search academic field, politics and law. And oh, there we go. Yeah, a whole uh, bunch of professors pop up here. Uh, and then, for example, Professor Ataka uh, was into critical international relations theory and international political economy. economy. <clears throat> you can click on his page here. And uh, it's, uh, as you can see at the top, the programs and languages are master's and doctoral in Japanese and English. So he's capable, uh, he's eligible to, you know, uh, be an academic advisor for you, whether you want to do um, your master's or your PhD. And the professor's, you know, details and all sorts of information are listed here. And, it, you know, uh, it goes on. Yes. So uh, I strongly uh, encourage you, um, if you would like to get into one of our programs, first find um, an advisor uh, that's going to be, you know, match your interest. And a lot of the advisors <clears throat> list like in this case, their email and a professor's email is just right here. Um, depending on the graduate school, the you know, sort of layout of the uh, faculty, uh, individual faculty pages are a little bit different. Uh, most of them will, will eventually, if you uh, link you back to a researcher's database, which is sort of an overall database of all the faculty. And in some cases, the, uh, not in this case, but in some cases, the faculty will uh, list their email address at the very uh, bottom here, at the very end of their, their profile. So you can find uh, their contact info that way. Of course, if you can't uh, find it or it's not listed, you can always go... Oh. Uh, You're on, for example, Graduate School of International's main page. Where's their contact info? Sorry, this is not a <laughs> this this case is not a good example. Their contact info is a little bit hidden, but yes, you could uh, oh access. Okay, yeah, sorry, yeah. So this is a bad example. Uh, this seems like they're kind of hiding their contact info there, but yeah, you can contact the administrative office of uh, each graduate school, or you can contact the International Center directly. I, I will give you my email in a moment for that, and uh, we can uh, help you out getting in touch with the professor. So one other thing, uh, since the questions have already come in um, uh, earlier, from, there was a few questions uh, for the other universities mentioning uh, scholarships, particularly the MEX scholarship. And if you're, sorry, if you're on our Mitsumikan University main page, if you go all the way to the top, we, there's something admissions and aid here. And if you scroll down, you can find our uh, degree programs through this page as well. But you can hover over at uh, financial aid, click on that, and it'll bring you down to our scholarship based uh, admissions. So we have a variety of scholarships for self financed uh, applicants, including uh, tuition waivers, tuition reduction, um, uh, another, you know, uh, tuition reducing uh, academic awards. We also have a great relationship with many scholarship foundations, and we have a, a quite high track record. So if we, if the university recommends you to an external foundation, for example, Mitsubishi funded uh, scholarship or whatever it might be, um, we have a good track record of students um, 
getting awarded uh, those scholarships. And our office does, you know, goes through great lengths to uh, help students in, you know, uh, when they're applying for these individual scholarships as well to, you know, review their, uh, you know, uh, short essays and such and, and, and give them the best chance to be awarded. However, if you're interested in a uh, full scholarship from the get-go, uh, or perhaps you can't fund yourself otherwise, we do uh, have the MEXT recommendation, uh, university recommendation scholarship here. We also admit MEXT embassy recommended scholars every year, uh, many of them. Um, also at uh, Asian Development Bank and International Monetary Funds, Giant Scholarship Council, so on and so forth, many uh, scholarships here. Uh, in the case of university recommendation, I will mention uh, especially um, because we're currently, uh, the, the application period is open right now, uh, up until December 21st. And if you uh, all the information is available on this page, um, but here I'll just pop open the application guidelines real quick. Hopefully we can um, see that and I can maybe zoom in a little bit. Yeah, um, but our uh, graduate schools of international relations, science and engineering, information science, and engineering and life sciences are all recruiting uh, applicants for the university recommendation scholarship for the master's and doctoral or one or the other uh, level. And um, Science and engineering in particular and life sciences have uh, quite a few uh, positions uh, that they're recruiting for, quite a few openings. Information science and engineering and international relations, unfortunately, have a very small number of positions allocated to them currently. So um, it's going to be very tough admissions for them. But uh, particularly for science and engineering and life sciences uh, interested students, I encourage you to apply. Uh, we, we hope to uh, receive many applications for this. And, um, you know, we have a good number of spots available. Uh, so, you know, hopefully... Uh, you know, maybe you get a chance uh, through this scholarship. So I highly recommend anyone interested to apply since the application period is uh, coming to an end on December 21st. So, uh, likewise, uh, we also have something called the Asian Development Bank Japan Scholarship Program, ADBJSP. This is a scholarship specifically for economics uh, master's program. Um, and so you need to have two years of work experience for this scholarship. Uh, however, you know if you are uh, if you have two years of work experience and you've already earned your bachelor's, I encourage and you're you know, an economics uh, student who wishes to take a master's, I encourage you to uh, apply ASAP. The December, uh, deadline is uh, this coming week, the fourteenth. So if you you know can send your application um, by post um, and uh, also by uh, email. Uh, by this deadline, hopefully, you know, you can uh, just get in uh, at the last minute here and give yourself a chance at this excellent scholarship as well. So, um, over, oh, sorry, there we go, there we go. Um, <clears throat> So just to yeah speak about tuition fees at Ritsumeikon. So we are a private university. Uh, unfortunately, that means our tuition is a little bit more expensive than uh, you know national universities. However, it's still considerably cheaper uh, when you consider you know studying abroad in uh, for example somewhere in the U.S. or in Europe or something. Uh, right now, especially with the uh, the, the uh, yen the way it is currently, it's uh, pretty affordable I think to study in Japan. Um, our tuition fees for our master's programs are as written on the left side here. However, international students, if they apply, uh, are guaranteed a 20% tuition reduction scholarship if they're in our English language programs. And we have other uh, awards available to a large number of our master's students. So in actuality, the, uh, the amount of tuition that we, it's going to cost you um, would be more in this range that's listed here on the right side. And that's, again, it's dependent on sort of which um, scholarship and at what sort of level uh, you are awarded when you're applying with us uh, as a self-financed applicant. Uh, as I mentioned just now, we have tuition reduction including 100%. If you get this one, that's going to cover you for your full uh, two years of the master's or three years of the doctoral program. Uh, if you don't get this, and of course it's quite um, you know competitive, uh, again, all students who apply for it uh, can be uh, can earn this 20% tuition reduction as long as they're studying in English with us. That's once uh, it lasts one year long. However, you can just you know reapply uh, each year. Uh, and again, there's a scholarship called Academic Excellence, and this is uh, sort of 
uh, somewhere between approximately 350 US dollars and about 1800 US dollars per year, which is deducted from your tuition fees. And that's, you can receive that at the same time as the 20% tuition reduction scholarship. So, um, you know, ultimately it, it reduces your uh, fees a considerable amount. As for the doctoral program, uh, it's a fixed uh, cost. Uh, so if you consider the admission fee and the tuition for the first year, it's just under 5,000 US. And then in consequent years, uh, subsequent years rather, you know, it's about $3,500 US uh, per year. And this is not considering uh, any scholarship. So again, you know, 20% tuition reduction scholarship is guaranteed so long as you apply uh, each year for it. Um, so you can take off 20% of this um, and then, as well as any other uh, scholarships which you may receive. Of course, there's JASO uh, scholarship for first year students, uh, many of them. Um, but yeah, we also, again, recommend many students to different scholarship foundations and they have a good track record of being uh, awarded those scholarships with us. Um, so I'm not quite sure how much time I have left, but uh, let me just mention here, um, at the International Center, we can take all of your inquiries. Uh, this address, cger-bkc at st.ritzme.ac.jp is the address uh, which I handle, uh, which takes in basically all sorts of different inquiries. Uh, this is also the address where you email your application if you're applying for something like the, you know, again, the next uh, university recommended or embassy recommended scholarship. This is the address you would be contacting. So you might want to just screen cap uh, this, this uh, image right now. Uh, and let us know if you have any questions at all. Of course, if you have questions that are unrelated, you can send them to us and we'll just forward them to, you know, whichever graduate school office or uh, other office is appropriate to answer for you. Uh, again, for undergraduate admissions, it's a different address uh, handled by a different office. So if you're uh, a high school student, please uh, check that out. And... I'm not sure how I am on time currently, um, but I think, yeah, with that, maybe I can take a few questions now. Oh, thank you, Mr. Rani, for a very mm -hmm. well-organized presentation, for sharing a lot of details. I am like all the doubts about housing and scholarships and the timeline, everything, that, whatever doubts students have, they must be cleared from your presentation. So, but uh, still, let's look into a few questions. Mm -hmm. mm, so after the session, whom should I contact to clear my doubts? So you have shared an email ID of the, uh, like in the end of international admissions team. Is it that or is there anything else? Yes. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah I'll send, I think, into the uh, the chat later. But yes, the address that I just uh, had up on the screen, you know, um, really either of them, you know, you can send any questions you have. And if it's, if it's sort of the wrong uh, place to ask that particular question, you know, we'll forward it to whoever it needs to be con uh, sent to, and we can definitely answer your questions. Oh, yes, thank you. So uh, these scholarships which you have shared, uh, there mm -hmm. were plenty of scholarships. So are they automatically applied with when, they're, when the students are applying with the admission or is there a separate uh, scholarship application process? Yeah, so uh, for the case of the, the page I showed on the, uh, on the homepage there, which had ADB, uh, mm -hmm. uh, IMF scholarship and all the MEX scholarship and so on. Those are separate um, applications. So if you want, you know, that, that's a scholarship based admissions, basically. So, um, for example, if we have one or let's say if we have five scholarship positions for whatever scholarship it might be, only five students will pass that admission screening and they'll mm -hmm. all be recommended for the scholarship. So those are uh, that page is particularly separate scholarships, um, although there are some in between ones actually that are listed there, it's it gets a little complicated. But um, if you go through the page of the individual graduate schools, that's how you're going to find uh, self-financed regular admissions. And mm -hmm. for self-financed regular admissions, uh, when you apply for that, you're automatically screened for the other uh, scholarships I mentioned in the um, uh, slideshow, things like tuition reduction, things like the uh, Academic Excellence Scholarship, uh, and so on. Those are sort of automatically uh, screened uh, for the, when you're applying through those. Yes, okay. Thank you so much for answering that. And uh, in one of your slides in your presentation, you have mentioned the uh, limit, I mean, the uh, like number of uh, eligible, not eligible students, but number of seats allocated to each department. Mm -hmm. So with that statistics and with the current statistics, so what is the current student body like, like internationally and Japanese students? Um, overall? Yes, mean? overall, yeah. At the university? 
Yes. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, again, we have about, um, at the undergraduate, about 35,000 uh, students and then graduate level, about 3,000 students. Um, of our 3,000 graduate students, 1,000 uh, plus are international. And at the undergraduate level, about 20, what is it now? About about 2,000 or so are, yeah, about 2,000 or so are, are uh, international students. And, you know, we have uh, quite a few uh, undergraduate programs as well as uh, short-term programs at the university. Mm -hmm. They're all offered in English. So mm -hmm. every campus is pretty... Um, uh open and there's a lot of uh uh yeah international students on every campus and uh, we have you know i think a good um uh, variety of sort of food available on campus for all tastes um mm -hmm. uh, a lot of sort of thought has been given and in, into the support uh for the many international students that we have on campus um yeah, okay, thank yeah. you. So if I'm not wrong, I think Ritsumekan is one of the universities which have a huge international body. Yes, right? yeah, I think uh, we're generally uh, second or third in the country for in international student numbers, mm -hmm. So, uh, which is partly a virtue of just being a large university overall, but also a virtue of the university really pushing, um, you know, to, to uh, op open itself up for international students. And that's reflected also in our faculty. We have, you know, faculty from all over the world, uh, from all walks of life. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a, a very sort of open uh, community with a lot of international students participating in a lot of, you know, different extracurricular activities. So I think it's a, a real great place uh, for anyone interested in, in studying in Japan. Yes, that really sounds very exciting. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing yeah. the information. And okay. before we end, I would like to ask one last question. So since mm -hmm. you are also from the admissions team, yes. uh, what advice would you give to the prospective students? So I'll end with this note. Okay. And in that case, I saw one question that got answered by someone else. And I just want to touch mm -hmm. on it briefly before before answering that. So I saw in the in the uh, Q&A just a moment ago, it just disappeared. But uh, someone, a PhD, a hopeful student who wants to study agronomy, uh, and I think it mentioned the MEX scholarship. So I'll just mention, because our life sciences department currently has a handful of MEX scholarships, we are recruiting uh, doctoral program uh, applicants, and we do uh, have a strong uh, sort of program in uh, in agronomy. Um, particularly, you might be interested in Professor Kubo, who has gotten, he's, just go on, on the life sciences page and you'll, mm -hmm. you'll find him. He's, he's a, a quite an accomplished professor uh, in that field, doing work uh, all over the world, really, um, uh, at the behest of the Japanese government and other governments. Um, and so, yeah, uh, might be a professor you could be interested in looking into. Um, beyond that, yeah, about uh, sort of advice for applicants. So, um, well, as I mentioned earlier, the first thing you want to do is find out if we have a faculty member that's you're interested in. Um, you know, I guess maybe one step back would be in check out if we have the college or graduate school you're interested in, then find a faculty member. Um, when you contact them, what you want to do is think your first email out a little bit. Okay, they don't want to receive a one line email. They're you know one line email is going to go straight into the trash can. So please, you know, give it a little thought. Um, try you know you don't have to have great grammar, but you know try your best and. Uh, for your first email, please attach a uh, your draft of your research plan and like a simple CV or something so that the professor from the get-go can get an idea of who you are, um, get an idea that you're serious because you've attached this research plan and, you know, they don't have a lot of time, so they don't want to be going back and forth, you know, with potential students who may never even apply. So from the first step, you want them to know that you're serious. So please, yeah, attach the CV, attach the, uh, the research plan there and... Um, you know, um, and take it from there. Otherwise, uh, just be thoughtful, I guess, in your application. Uh, if you're applying through the regular admissions, there's, you know, going to be perhaps, uh, it's different with each graduate school, they make up their own rules, basically, but, um, you know, they might have short answer essays or things like that. Um, those are the things where you can get yourself some points. So your GPA is already, you know, set in stone, right? So you can't really change that. Um, uh, the only things that you can really do are try and get a maybe a good uh, recommendation letter and try and you know give uh, yourself the best look by having a nice uh, 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 
sort of short answer essay there. So just, yeah, give that some thought. Uh, maybe have one of your friends look it over and um, just be objective about, about it. Um, don't rush that. And I think you'll have a great chance at uh, getting it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. Thank you for a very uh, resourceful advice. And thank you once again for having, uh, like, for, like, it was a pleasure having you here. So thank you once again for joining us. Thank you. So let me share the agenda slide. So we are almost done with the uh, presentations. So uh, if you have any further questions, uh, like you can share, you can scan this few, uh, QR code for, to register for our upcoming webinars. But before that, I would like to thank all the panelists and the universities for joining us today. So without you, the, today's webinar wouldn't have been possible. And also thank you to all the participants who joined us today and attended the webinar. I hope the uh, universities have given you an overview of uh, what's, how studying here, how studying here is. And your active engagement and participation has made this webinar a success. So we hope that uh, it was very insightful. And for more information about uh, more universities and scheduled webinars, please scan the QR code, which I'll be sharing uh, in a few minutes. And thank you once again, panelists, for being here. So uh, we can end the webinar now. Um, thank you to all the universities as well for joining us. So uh, you are free to leave the webinar. Uh, I hope we see you in the next webinars.